Hi everyone, so I'm back with a Let's Make and I'm going to show you how I made these um, envelope covers and let's just get started. I've been trying to do this all day. Right, so you'll need an envelope, an, a window envelope. If you haven't got a window envelope, you don't have to use a window envelope. You can just use one and just put an image on the front if you wish. So I've coffee dyed my envelope. This envelope measures, we call them here in the UK, a DL sized envelope. So they measure, um, so sometimes when you coffee dye they shrink a little bit, <laughs> paper does shrink a little bit. Um, I'm better off doing this because I'm rubbish at inches, right? So even then it's still, it's 21.7 centimetres, so that's 21.7 centimetres by 11, right, and I'll try and work it out in, in, in inches. So that should be better on my Tim Holtz ruler. I am so bad, I really am. All right, so it's eight and a half, <laughs> eight and a half uh, inches by four inches, right? I do have to cut this down to, um, I want the length of it to be eight and a quarter. What I'm gonna do first is just trim a little bit off the top. Um, because I need the envelope to be open for what I'm doing. So that's that. And what I'll do is I will just mark it at eight and a quarter. And oh, my pencil, it's in my hair. <laughs> I used it to tie my head up, my head up, my hair up, because it's it was getting really hot in here. So, um, yep, that's that. I've, lo I've lost the little metal bit out of the Tim Holtz ruler. Well, actually, I haven't lost it. It's It fell out and it won't stay in. So, I have to switch between rulers. Um, so, there we go. Right, so that's that open. Just going to take these little bits away, like that. I mean, you don't have to coffee dye the envelope. I've just got, obviously, a lot of them coffee dyed already. Right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm trimming away this part uh, just like so. And keep that, you can use that to do something else with because I keep all my scraps. Right, so now I've got my envelope to the right size that I want it to be. <clears throat> and obviously these are like uh, tall, skinny um journals journal covers so I'm just gonna round that and round that because that was already rounded right I've picked this image to go behind my uh, my window like that so all I'm gonna do is well actually I'm gonna trim that down a little bit first I can find a pair of scissors now, I'm hoping to do this in one part, but I can't promise that it's all going to get done in one part. I'm just going to trim that down a little bit and hopefully I haven't messed that up and then it still will fit in there. Put that away. So, yep, right, so I'm just going to put some glue around the window on this side the glue wants to come out yes I've been trying to do this I wanted to get a few things done today but you know what it's like when you make plans they never happen so I didn't get it done my grandson was around for a little bit today so obviously sat out in the garden to see him and my glue's all blocked up and then I got a really nasty headache and I don't often get headaches so I took myself off for what I thought would be just a cheeky snooze you know, I thought I'll go to bed for an hour and see if I can get a, a snooze and oh, this glue. Trust it to happen while I'm on camera. Yeah, so I just thought I'd get like a cheeky snooze and actually slept for about two and a half, three hours. Then I woke up feeling really groggy because I had too much sleep. And um, <clears throat> then I had to make dinner. Uh, so I'm just going to sit that there so that I can make sure. Oops. And make sure that was in there like that yeah made dinner 
then I decided I was going to make a banana bread and then my son's late home from work so um, I kind of like to see him when he comes in from work and like sort his dinner out and all that because I don't really see that much of him so I'm just going to glue that down you can trim that right down if you want to but you're not going to see this because I am covering it with <clears throat> two sheets of coffee dyed paper so this has got a little bit of a rustic look and feel to it um, so, and if you do give it a go then you'll know if you you know you do it this way you'll know what I mean by rustic -y, um, a rustic feel to it right what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna use just checking my time um, I'm just gonna use my old crappy pieces of paper as I call them and using my glue which is PVA and it's um, two parts glue to one part water and that's that works well for me uh, I only use Mod Podge for certain things I use this for all my decoupaging and things like that so I'm just going to put that on there And it's very simple. And the reason I've got this side up is because I don't want, well, we're not going to see it on the other side anyway, because you're going to put another layer on. Um, I tried it with cardstock and it was too thick. If you I don't know, I just didn't like it with the cardstock. So the two, two of this, you can, you could run a little piece of fabric down the middle or some Tyvek or something like that. Right, so I'm going to go off and glue that onto the other page and then cut it all out and then I'll be back. Right, so my uh, two layers of um, coffee dyed paper is now dried on there. I put it, I cheated and put it over my radiator. Um, you know, not like it's hot enough outside and I'm turning heaters on. So I'm just going to corner around these edges. Um, because I've used obviously a very wet glue, it has got some um, like ripples and things in it which is really good because it gives you some texture which um, you know I like so I'm just gonna reinforce my little uh, centre here I haven't got any room to put my scoreboard down so I'm just gonna do that anyway right so I'm gonna come in now with some gesso um, I can get the lid off of it <clears throat> there we go struggled yesterday as I hadn't used it in ages. Right, it's making sure I'm all in frame here. Just going to take a little bit out of the pot and just put it in the lid. Um, and I'm just going to gear there and everywhere. Changing direction of the brush just to give, well it just gives a different effect. Uh, can put on as much or as little as you like. Uh, I'm only going to do the outside. If you get any on the window then just use a baby wipe to get it off like that. Um, <clears throat> I would use a dry brush to put that on because otherwise it gets all wet and yucky. Right. Now I'm going to come in with a stamp. I've got a couple of stamps that I'm going to use. Which is <clears throat> this strip stamp, which is a, I think it was a crafter's companion. was gifted to me by Vicky Leach. And again, thank you for that. So I'm just going to put some ink on it. I'm using um, archival uh, potting soil which is a, a permanent waterproof ink. Right, so I'm just gonna just put little bits here, there and everywhere. Not too much uh, like pressure on it because I don't want like bold, um, like a bold transfer. Uh, just, like I said, here, there and everywhere. I mean, uh, I mean, I got this particular idea of doing the gesso and the stamping 
is obviously an idea from Artie Mays. Uh, she's always doing, she's always getting the gesso out and she's always stamping, like random stamping. So there we go, I've had enough of that one. <laughs> then I've got um, a couple of stamps here which are like mixed media stamps. They were from, originally I think from Bull Bunny. So I've got uh, this one, it's got the little circles, like honeycomb I think it is. And then this one is, well it's like that. So I'm just going to do some random stampings with that. Just literally on and off. A little bit there, a bit down there. Then come in with the, the little circle ones. everywhere now that's enough for me I mean you can carry on and do whatever you like um, then my next thing is I'm actually going to quickly um, <clears throat> put my I'll take that off for a minute uh, without trying to get any heat on this because it will melt I'm just going to hold it up high just to make sure that that ink's all dry What do you think it is now? Right. Now, I was not as prepared as I thought it was. Oops, moving stuff. So I'm going to use um, my Tim Holtz Distress Ink, and this is Broken China. And I'm just going to dab a few pieces. <clears throat> a few pieces. <laughs> a few bits on my glass mat. And then I'm coming in with some water just to give a tiny little spray if it wants to come out, just like that, nothing more. Um, and I've got a little plastic bag, you've seen me do that before as well, just take it up and obviously it changes on there and I'm just gonna go over on that. Just not dabbing down, just letting it fall onto it because obviously the wetness is, well, the, you know, the ink is heavier on there because of the water, if that makes sense and just dab that around that's just to give another bit of color to it as well because i'm <clears throat> uh, i'm using the butterflies in blue kit for this again <laughs> that's the ones that i done if you watched yesterday's video where um, i made them see right that's absolutely perfect for what i want I'm just going to wipe that up. Now, as, you can, as I said, I'm only doing the front. You can do the inside cover if you wanted to as well. Entirely up to you. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go off and sew around the edges. So that's me. I've sewn around the edges now. I've got it, um, folded it in half. And what I'm just going to do is come in with some Distress Ink. And I don't know where my thingy bob has gone. Oh, there it is applicator so I'm just going to go around the edges this is a vintage photo obviously use whatever ink you prefer and I'm going to put down the middle and a bit here and there just so that it's not so white with like obviously the gesso There we have it. That's it. Done. Um, there we go. And obviously decorate it as you like. Um, what I did do is my papers that I trimmed down. When I print, um, let me see. Oops. I've got a laser, so I can't get borderless. I've always got that border. So that goes to, what is that? That's seven and that's more than three quarters. Let's see, 20 centimeters, right? So <clears throat> I'll pick which part of the papers that I want to use in the journal. And then I measured 
like from there to there and I done 17 and a half centimeters so wh whatever part of that width wise I trimmed down to 17 and a half centimeters to fit inside that journal um, because obviously even though 17 and a half is less than the cover because the cover is 19 you've got to allow for the expansion when you put all your sign when you put your signature together it kind of bulks out a little bit so there we have it easy peasy lime and squeezy um i hope that was helpful um i do have some more things that i'm going to share this week providing i get the time to do it and there's not loads of other stuff going on um so if you have any questions just ask and thanks for watching bye